Okay, we're starting topic 23 today. This is the first block. In this lesson, we're going to be extending some knowledge you should have gotten in middle school on what are called nets. And we're going to look at um, a different number of unique nets for a given object. So first of all, you um, and every day see drawings and diagrams that are representing three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. For example, any picture of something in the real world that you see in a book is simply a two-dimensional representation of that three-dimensional object. Sometimes it is necessary to look at various views of three-dimensional objects. Architects, for example, often show their clients different views um, from a building they might be building. They might give them a top view or a front view, um, different two-dimensional views, but of course the building itself would be a three-dimensional um, object. So you can see here in this animation that it's a three-dimensional building, but in this top right diagram, that is a two-dimensional view of, or one view of that building itself. So nets are a way to provide another way of representing a three-dimensional object in two dimensions. A net is simply a flat pattern that can be folded in order to make the three-dimensional object. Nets are really important in the design of packaging, as you will see in this animation here. So we have a net of a cereal box. So it's a flat piece of cardboard and is printed and manufactured on a flat piece of that board and then it's folded in order to make the box that you would obviously recognize as a cereal box. So a cube is what we would consider the simplest rectangular prison. And so we're going to look at what the net of a cube might look like. And so what we're going to see them do is to cut the solid out, um, open. So they're going to cut several of the edges of that prism and then use that to open up that cube so we can look at its net. So you can see here they have cut three edges on the top, three edges on the bottom, but we still don't have a net. It's not flat um, piece of board yet. So now they're going to have to cut this edge here and that will allow us to open it up and see its net. So when you look at the net, you can see how many faces made up that prism. We had one, two, three, four, five, six square faces that came together to make that cube. Now, that is only one example of a net of a cube. There's lots of different ways that you could draw a net for a cube. Now, it's only a unique net if it's not a reflection or rotation of this one. So, for example, this one is kind of a sideways T. If I rotate it and make it a right side up T, that's not a different, different net. That's the same one. So, if it's simply a reflection or rotation of this one, that's not a different net. So it would have to be completely different. Um, and we'll look at some more examples of nets of cubes here in a little bit. So your question two on your notes is for you to draw one that you think would work for a cube that's different from the one that they just showed you. So you can pause the video here and go ahead and draw that. And then we might possibly see your, your net here in just a moment. So Dimensions refer to the length, width, or height of an object. When we talk about dimensionality, we're referring to the number of dimensions an object has. So let's look at this animation to see some objects with different types of dimensionality and review some vocabulary that we have learned with three-dimensional objects. So first of all, we can see here we just have a point. A point has no size and it has no dimension. So it would be what we would consider a zero dimensioned object. So it has no size, no shape, no dimension. Now when we extend that point and make a segment, we now have a one dimension figure. It has length. That's the only thing it has though. It doesn't have any height, doesn't have any width, it just has length. So that's a one dimension figure. 
Now we're going to extend it to where it has a width in addition to the length. So now it has two dimensions. This is a two-dimensional object, and this is what we consider the figures that we look at in geometry. They are two-dimensional figures. Now we're going to add some depth or height to this figure, and it now has three dimensions. It has length, it has width, it has height. It is a three-dimensional object. So we're going to review some vocabulary um, that we have learned with 3D figures. First of all, faces. Faces are the flat surfaces of the prism or whatever 3D object you have. So this cube has six faces. It has one at the top, one at the bottom, and four along the sides. And each one of those faces in a cube is a square. The edges are where two faces come together. And so those are those segments that you can see highlighted here. There's four at the top, there's four at the bottom, and there's four along the sides. And so there are 12 total edges for this cube. The vertices are the points where the edges come together. And so you can see that we have a total of eight vertices in a cube, four on the top and four at the bottom. Um, by the way, the answers to your notes on questions three. Um, the first one, it says BFGC is called a what of the cube? That is a face. CG is called a, um, an edge. And really, it should have a segment bar over that. And then the point E is called a vertex. Question four, it says there are many pairs of parallel line segments in this cube, but there's also many perpendicular line segments. For example, the lines that contain segment AE, like you can see here, and CG are parallel. They would never intersect. Now segments AE and AD are perpendicular. They would intersect to form right angles. Lines that intersect or are parallel must be coplanar, meaning they must be in one plane together. So the lines that contain AE and AD are coplanar. They both lie in plane AEHD, that face of the cube. Can you see the plane that contains the parallel lines AE and CG? It's not one of the faces, is it? It would be like a slice that we took diagonally down the cube but that would be a plane containing both AE and CG. Now I want you to look at segment AD and CG. Would those two lines ever intersect each other? No, but they're not parallel, are they? We have a special name for those lines. They're called skew lines. So skew lines are also a pair of lines that never intersect, but they are not in the same plane. So line CG and line AD are example of that. So in your notes on question four, it says using the image, the lines that contain segment AB and segment FE are parallel. So we have AB is here, FE is here. So they're on that same top plane and they would never intersect. The lines that contain segment AB and FG a, B, and F, G would also never intersect, but they are not in the same plane, so those are called skew lines or segments. And then the last one, the lines that contain segment A, B, and B, C, since they intersect to form a right angle, are perpendicular. Another way to see the relationship between two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects is to analyze what are called plane seg seg sections, sorry, I can't talk, of solids. A plane section of a three-dimensional object is simply the intersection of that object and a plane. You could think of a plane section as a slice of the object, like you're cutting it with a knife. A cross section is a special plane section. It is when you take a plane section of a prism, pyramid, cylinder, or cone where it is parallel to the base. So if it's parallel to the base, it's called a cross section. If it's at a different angle, then it's called a plane section. 
Again, a cube is the simplest right rectangular prism, and here are some different slices of a cube. Can you tell which one might be a cross section? I hope you can tell the blue one here, since it's parallel to the base. That would be called a cross section. This purple and this red one would be plain sections. So you can list those on number five. The first one is a cross section. What is the shape of that cross section? Since it's parallel to the base, it's got to be the same shape of this, of this as the base. So it is a square, just like the base is. Um, the next two are what you call plane sections. And it looks like on your notes it's opposite order of what's on my um, lesson. So this is the last one, the red one on the picture, and it's the section looks like it might be a triangle. And then this is the middle one pictured on the screen. It looks like it might be a rectangle, that purple section there. So it says arch um, architects draw various representations of three-dimensional objects, and two of these representations are called orthographic and isometric drawings. So the orthographic is here what you see on the right. This is a top, front, and side view of a three-dimensional object. The isometric view kind of lets you see it kind of appear like a 3D object. So this is isometric and this is orthographic. So those are different ways of looking um, at three-dimensional objects in a two-dimensional view. It says on your notes, what are some of the two-dimensional views you could represent with an orthographic projection of a three-dimensional object? And those are highlighted here, top, front, and side. Those are the typical views that are given in an orthographic view. So earlier we saw a um, specific net for a cube, like the one that's shown here on the left. But remember, if it's simply a rotation or reflection of that net, it's not a different net. But here is a, an example of a different net of a cube. So we're supposed to see if that might actually fold up into a cube or not. Let's look at our animation here. So this is the one we've already looked at that definitely came from a cube because we cut it open there. Do you think the second one will? And it does. It works as a cube as well. So let's look at this net. Do you think that'll fold up into a cube? Do you see a problem there? How it overlaps those two squares and you would never have one on the top? So not every net that you look at is going to work for a cube. This is a net. It has six faces that are squares, but if you fold it up, it does not make a cube. So not all of them 